All right, here we go. Take four. Um, piecewise functions are often used to represent real-life problems. They contain a combination of equations, each corresponding to a part of the domain. So piecewise functions are functions, but they have multiple pieces um, that we use um, to sometimes reflect different ty types of real-life word problems, and you'll see once we get going. So let's start with the basics. How do we evaluate and read in piecewise functions? So f of 2. This is function notation that says, what is the value of the function when x is equal to 2? Well, what you have to do now is you actually have to look at all three pieces and look at their corresponding domains and find which domain 2 belongs in. So you start at the top. This is where x is less than negative 3. Is 2 less than negative 3? No, it is not. This is where x is between negative 3 and 5. Does 2 belong there? Yes, it does. So what you do is you just substitute 2 in for x in the middle part of this equation. And 2 times 2 is 4, and you are done. So then we're going to move on to f of negative 3. So we go back, and you have to be careful. This says x is less than negative 3. Is negative 3 less than negative 3? No. Is negative 3 less than or equal to x? Yes, it is. So it goes over here. Um, and then again, it's just 2 times negative 3, which is equal to a negative 6. C says find f of negative 7. So we go back, start at the top. Is negative 7 less than a negative 3? Yes, it is. So we're going to plug it into the top part of this equation this time, except for 3 times a negative 7 plus 1 is going to give us negative 20. And finally, D, we have to substitute F of 9. So 9 goes into not the first, not the second, but the last, because 9 is greater than or equal to 5. So that means... 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. So that's how you evaluate a piecewise function. So you could probably predict that that means they're pretty tricky to graph. And you have to be very careful. So I'm actually going to show you two methods. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand because, well, if you're without your calculator on the day of a quiz or a test and you need to take it by hand, you can still do it. And I will show you how to do it by hand for the first two. And the second two examples of the notes, I will teach you how to do it with a shorter way using your calculator. And then at the very end of the lesson, I will leave a step-by-step -step instructions to how you could enter an entire piecewise function into your calculator. But it takes a lot of work, and to be honest with you, by the time you get it entered in your calculator, you could probably already have it graphed by hand. So, here we go. How to do it by hand. Number 2a has two different parts. Um, I have a whole bunch of different tips for you, and the first tip that I have is this is your domain, and it kind of gives you a starting point. So what I suggest is coming up with a starting point for where your graph is going to start. So this says 2, and all you have to do is you substitute 2 into your equation here. So if you substitute 2 into 2 thirds x plus 2, you get 2 thirds times 2 plus 2, and you get 10 thirds. Okay? Now, another thing I say is look at this. This is x is greater than. So you're going to have an open circle, and your graph is going to go to the right with a slope of 2 thirds. Now, that's just all the little prerequisite work I have before we start graphing it by hand. If you can do this in your head, that's totally fine. I'm just giving you some step-by-step -step tips. Um, for the second one, we still have our starting domain at 2. And if we substitute 2 into here, we get negative 2 plus 1, which is going to give us 2, negative 1 as our starting point. And then, <clears throat> this is x is less than or equal to. That means we're going to start with a solid dot, but this graph is going to go to the left. And it's going to have a slope of negative 1. So that's just a little bit of groundwork to help you graph this. So then we graph it. We start at 2 comma 10 thirds, which we know is a little bit more than 3. And we're going to put an open circle because it does not include 2. And then 
as you can see, we're going to go to the right with a slope of a positive two-thirds. That means we go up two and over three. And we put another dot. We go up two and over three. We put another dot. And you can see that this is part one of your piecewise function. Part two. We start at two, negative one with a solid dot because it is included with the x is less than or equal to. And our slope is a negative one, but we're going to the left. So let's think about a slope of negative one. That's down one over one. And we have a dot there, but we don't want to go that way. We want to go to the left. So that's like going up one, left one. And then we go up one, left one. And this is what your final graph is going to look like. That is a piecewise function. They call it a piecewise function because it does pass the vertical line test. As you can see, this is open circle, so it's not included. This is a closed circle, so it is. Passes the vertical line test. This one is done. So the next one is known as a step function. Step function is horizontal lines. They're going to look like steps. So this is going to be a horizontal line. It includes negative 4 but it does not include negative 3 and it's a horizontal line at the level y equals 1 so we're just gonna graph from negative 4 comma 1 solid dot to an open dot on negative 3 and you just draw a little horizontal line but then you can see that stops then we go we have a solid dot on negative 3 comma 2 and negative 2 comma 2 has an open circle all we did was step up and we end here because this is a solid dot because it includes the negative 3 open circle on the negative 2 because it does not include it at a horizontal line level of 2 and you can predict what's coming next you're just gonna step up one more time at level 3 negative 2 comma 3 we have a solid dot because it's included and then we have negative 1 comma 3 which is an open dot and we just connect the dots and there you go that is a little step function okay um, if you don't have your calculator sitting in front of you I suggest you go get it because I'm going to give you a uh, a way to graph piecewise functions with your calculator um, it's not going to be the only way you can do it with your calculator it's just an easier way by using a table feature um, so go ahead pause the video go get your calculator and as soon as you're ready come on back okay so here's the calculator way of doing it uh, remember your calculator can provide a table for you so if you don't like graphing piecewise functions by hand although it might take you a little bit longer you can use your calculator to do so by clicking y equals and making sure you have nothing typed into any of your y's you just start by entering the first part of this piecewise function which is the absolute value of 2x plus 4 so to do that you just go to math slide over to number and number one is abs which is absolute value you press number one and then inside the parentheses is going to be the absolute value so you just do your 2x plus 4 close your parentheses and you are done with the first step now it says x is greater than negative 7 so what you do is you press second graph and you go to your table um, I have to go to my table set in case you are still in um, you know ask you need to go to automatic and then you want to make sure your table start is somewhere around 0 um, so we'll just do this second table again and here you go so remember, this graph is for everything that is greater than negative 7, but you still want to go back to negative 7 because you need to see where your starting point is. So at negative 7, you just start working your way to the right until you can't graph anymore. So negative 7, 10 gets an open circle because it is not included. And then just start picking good points. You can go to negative 6, 8. Then you can go to negative 5, 6. And you can go to negative 4, 4. You see what's happening here, negative 3, 2. And then you get to negative 2, 0. 
and then you get to negative 1 comma 2 notice you're jumping back up because we talked about absolute value the other day you should realize that an absolute value graph is going to look like a V and then you just keep on scrolling down until you're off the charts basically or if you remember how to do an absolute value you know that slope is just going to continue to jump up by 2 in this direction until you get here and you're done and you just go like this and you go like this and you get an arrow this way you don't have an arrow going to the left because it doesn't go uh, any further to the left than negative 7 but since x is greater than negative 7 it technically goes on forever so then what you do is you go back to your y equals you clear what you have in y1 and you type the second part y equals 3 now remember, y equals 3 is a horizontal line. So when you go to the table, you should see that everything in y equals is going to be uh, your 3. So this one, it says from negative 8 to negative 7. So you just need to look at negative 8. Negative 8 gives you 3. So we're going to have negative 8, open circle. And then it goes to less than or equal to negative 7. So you look at your negative 7, which is still 3. You get a solid dot. And then you just connect the dots. Last step. Negative 1 half x plus 2. You go back to your y equals. And you've got your negative 1 half x plus 2. And then you press second table and you only look at what's less than negative 8 so obviously for us we need negative 8 negative 9 and negative 10 at negative 8 we have an open circle at 6 negative 8 6 open circle and then we have we can do 6.5 if you want negative 9 6.5 or you can just skip to negative 8 6 or I'm sorry negative 10 7 and you graph your line and you put an arrow on it because it's going to be forever in the negative direction so that's a way that you can use your calculator to do so so what I would like you to do is I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to try to do D on your own using your calculator like I just did and we'll see if you get the same answer so did you get the exact same thing that I did you should have a horizontal line at negative 8 only when x is less than 7. That's why we have a horizontal line with an open circle at negative 7 going to the left because that's when x is less than negative 7. Then you should have an upside down absolute value, so an upside down v because the negative's on the outside. And if you were thinking about this by hand, your vertex would be negative 3, comma 0, opposite of the inside, comma outside. So that's why we have the negative 3, 0. And we just have our slope going from negative 7 to negative 1. It includes the negative 7. It does not include x equals negative 1. Then we have a parabola, x squared minus 1. If you don't remember how to do parabolas by hand, this is a perfect example of why using a calculator is going to be very helpful. Um, all you had to do is plug this into y, use your table, go from negative 1 to 3, and you should have a parabola. And the last step, you should have a positive 1 third x slope starting at 5, but we're never going to make it back to 5, but you can see how it would be up 1 over 3 to get there anyway. Open circle at 3, sliding to the right, going up 1 over 3, and you're done. Those are piecewise functions. Okay, um, if you can do it by hand, I think it saves time. But if you struggle with it, then take the time to use your calculator and the table feature. And as long as you type it in correctly, you're going to get the correct points and you just plot points and you go. Now this is a part I'm not really going to go through because I think it takes way too much time. But if you would like to see your calculator graph an entire piecewise function, you can enter it using a whole bunch of and statements and inequality so this is going to say that 3x minus 8 only when x is less than or equal to negative 3 plus negative 5 that's your y equals negative 5 only from negative 3 to negative or to 8 plus and then your negative 2x plus 14 only when x is greater than 8 I think it's much faster to do it by hand and if you do want to use your calculator, I think it's easier to do it in pieces.
But if you want to see your calculator do it, feel free to take a few minutes, type this in the calculator. If you like that way, do it. Longo is out.